I've turned my belt disc sander upside down to show you how the retracting caster systems work. Um, with the pedal up, the casters are retracted and clear the floor. With the pedal pushed down and latched, the, 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 the floor, the, the caster mounting boards here fold downwards so they're approximately flat. The casters extend and they jack the cabinet off the floor about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to disassemble here, remove the, the, the pedal and latch assembly, remove a couple of little hardwood blocks that retain these caster mounting boards. And then we can remove the caster mounting board. So we have a, a pedal arm attached to the rear board and the rear board attached to this front board with a couple of strap hinges. I, on this tool I just have rigid non-swivel casters because I would normally just pull it away from the wall uh, a foot or two to use it and then put it back in its parking spot. So no swivel casters on this tool. Inside the skirt are caster mounting blocks, the front one and the rear one. The rear one full width, the front one a little bit shorter because it has to leave room for the extend retract pedal arm to move. This whole assembly is attached to the tool with screws extending down into the plywood sides of the tool. Okay, that looks clear. And then you can see the uh, front pivot block as well as the rear pivot block on the inside here. To build the retracting caster system for the delt disc sander, I've cut out the basic pieces that form the base, the skirt, and the caster mounting pieces. So, first of all, the floor. With the rabbit machined on all four sides. I used a dado stack, partially buried under a sacrificial fence, to cut the rabbits. Uh, four skirt pieces. mitered at the corners and machined for biscuit reinforcements with the biscuit sloth cutting tool. I cut the miters on the skirt pieces with the miter saw tilted to 45 degrees. The skirt pieces are just uh, five and a half inch wide pieces of three quarter inch plywood mitered at the ends slots for biscuits, except for the front one, and I made up by, I had to provide for a slot for the extended retract lever, so I just used two 516 hardwood strips above and below, and two pieces for the skirt filler between the hardwood, hardwood layers. Inside the skirt, front and back, are the pivot blocks. A shorter, a shorter one for the front, room for the extend retract lever, and a longer one at the rear. And then, under the skirt are the caster mounting boards. They're rear full width rear one, and they reduced width front one. They'll be attached together with hinges and have the casters attached to them. The rear one will have this caster extend retract lever attached to it with bolts. I glued and clamped the skirt pieces 
to the floor. Use lots of rubber band clamps to hold the four skirt pieces together at the mitered corners. Okay, for the uh, corner where the, which has no biscuit because of the slot, I've just drilled in and glued a couple of quarter inch hardwood dowels to reinforce the corner. And to clean up the plywood edge, I'm just using my belt sander. Lay out the location of the casters on the underside of the caster mounting boards. They can be flush with the outside edges if the nuts are on the inside end of the casters. Leave room for the extend retract lever for this one rear caster. The casters need to be three eighths of an inch from the edge, the front and rear edges. So I'll mark all the holes and then take the boards over to my drill press and drill pilot holes. Pilot holes for the wood screws. When the casters are positioned, we can position the hinges as, as far out as, as possible and mark the holes, the screw holes for them. Remember that the caster mounting lever has to emerge from the slot, which will end up being on the right side when the base is in place underneath the sander tool. Okay, I'm fiddling around with the uh, caster retraction, trying to get to the to the point where the casters will retract fully and yet extend to jack the tool off the floor. To accomplish that, I had to, with trial and error, add washers between the rear caster board and the extend retract pedal arm here, until I got the angle just right to provide for Casters retracted, casters extended. Now that I'm satisfied that I have the pedal extension and retraction travel correct, I'm going to nail, or I have nailed, the pivot blocks in place back and front. Okay, we're nearly done with the base. It lifts the base off the floor almost a centimeter. Um, just now, all I've left to do is to make the latch. The, the main component of the latch is a latch pin or latch block or a pawl, which you want to tip in to lock the pedals in the extended position and tip out to allow the, the, the casters to retract. So. I've made up a pin the same size as in as my plans drawing. I've made up two ears or two pivot blocks to hold the pole and to mount the pedal. I'm going to clamp the uh, pole to one of the ears just to test its operation. And the ear is going to pivot on a number 10 bolt. Okay. 
and I think that's going to work just fine. I've given it, given this base a couple of coats of polyurethane, uh, sanded between uh, between the first and second coat with uh, 150 grit paper. I've completed fabrication of the latch. And for, for a pivot pin, I just took a long bolt and cut off the threads. Uh, can't have the pivot block or the arm bearing on the threaded portion of the bolt. So I've just drilled a hole, cut off the bolt and drilled a hole for a small cotter pin. One more step. I'm going to install three corner blocks to reinforce the corners, further reinforce the corners that have biscuits uh, in reinforcing the miters, but also these corner blocks will help retain the caster mounting boards, keep them from falling out if the unit is being picked up and moved for any reason. Okay, I've got the corner blocks installed back and the, the front corner opposite the retract lever. And that completes the stand. I've just attached intended for the my base to the, the sander with uh, nine three inch flathead screws drilled into the sides of the back of the, of the sander. And I drilled the holes in at a slight angle. Uh, when I'm drilling into the end of plywood, I always want to go at an angle so the screw intersects several layers and doesn't just go straight down and split layers of plywood. Okay, I can reinstall the caster board, the corner blocks, and the pedal latch assembly, and we're done. Okay, there's the completed sander base. Extend the casters, roll the sander out to use it, retract the casters. Go back to its parking spot. And there it is. Hope you enjoyed. This is the main carcass for the base of my Shopsmith stand. Um, it's made in a, a pyramid, somewhat pyramid shape, to give lots of stability when the tool is in the upright position. Um, a crude drawer to fit the opening, made out of salvage materials. The construction is fairly simple, uh, three quarter inch plywood, sides, floor, um, one and a half inch top. And of course I oriented the grain on the top end correctly uh, and found that this was a, a little bit springy when the tool was in the upright position. So I had to add a hardwood cross piece in here to stiffen the top and that proved to be okay. The bottom is just slightly smaller than the box. It leaves, it leaves a slightly exposed ledge here. Uh, otherwise, it's screwed to the sides of the back all around. The reason for the ledge is to give a resting spot for the skirt. Mitered corners reinforced with biscuits. Except for the corner near the slot here, I've reinforced it with, with dowels. The skirt slips around outside the bottom and rests on, on the ledge, the exposed, the slightly exposed ledge of the sides of the back. And then the, the skirt is retained with cleats made of a surplus MDF, cleats that are screwed to the floor and to the back. A slightly shorter cleat because of the slot, also screwed to the skirt 
into the floor. Okay, I've just finished installing the two cleats. They serve a double purpose. They provide the pads by which the whole cabinet is jacked off the floor and the retracting casters are extended. So here's the setup for the retracting casters. Two pieces of plywood. The front one's slightly shorter because of this arm that's attached with screws to the rear board. Swivel casters at the back, fixed casters at the front uh, for a little extra stability. Uh, okay. Casters extended, casters retracted. And I have a little latch. locks the caster arm down in the down position to, to, to lock the casters in the extended position. And they lift the cabinet off the floor um, a, a few millimeters, a qu uh, quarter inch, about a quarter inch. And then to hold these things in place uh, while the cabinet is being lifted, if the cabinet is being lifted for any reason, I've got a couple little hardwood blocks, one screwed to the front and one to the rear. As you can see I built a new skirt from the stand. Um, the original casters were just a little bit too light duty and they'd gotten worn and wobbling and not quite up to the job so I bought some little heavier casters and rebuilt the skirt. The drawer construction is pretty simple. I just started out with a piece of three quarter inch plywood bottom that I cut to fit the opening in the, in the stand. And then I added three quarter inch plywood back, vertical to the floor, and a three quarter inch plywood front, sloped at 79 degrees, the same as the stand. Then I added half inch sides attached with screws and attached the bottom with screws to the front and back. And then to make it look good, I added an overlay of quarter inch plywood that is, covers the exposed edges of the sides and the top of the stand. When I added the 1x4 hardwood reinforcement underneath the top to make the stand a little more rigid, I had to cut down the sides and the top by 3 quarters of an inch so it would clear the hardwood cross member that I'd added underneath the, underneath the cabinet. And that's why I've got this, these peculiar shaped sides and the difference in dimensions for the front and back height. I put a couple of plastic laminate strips into the bottom of the uh, case to make, it, make the door slide a little more easily. A pull and it's complete. Well, so there you have it. Retracting caster systems for my combination belt disc sander and my old Model 10 ER Shopsmith. Hope the videos are useful. Uh, and informative. Uh, if you're looking at this video, of course, you purchased the plans. So thanks very much for buying the plans for my retracting caster systems. And I uh, hope you have good luck and enjoy with your projects. I'd be very interested in seeing how you interpret uh, these plans in your projects. Thank you.